All right, so now let's look at a problem that's in a little bit different format. <coughs> so how to find the root solution, zeros, x intercept of the quadratic function. Now we have an a, b, and a c, and instead of equaling zero, we have this 15 here. So now we have an abundance of numbers. So usually the first thing we do is look at, can we factor anything out? Can I take anything out of here? And you look at, well, do, is there any number that all, th all four of my terms have? And you say, well, they don't all have an x, and I don't think there's any number that goes into one. You know, obviously, since one is here, one has to be the, you know, the lowest number. Um, so there's nothing that goes into all of them that I can take out. Now, the next step is usually to go ahead and make this always equal to zero, so I can go ahead and factor it. However, before you want to do that, you want to look for your special factors, like difference of two squares or perfect squares. And what I notice is, this is what we call a perfect square, because if I look at this, I can rewrite this as x plus 9 squared. And the reason I know that is because if I, know, if I was going to multiply the binomial x plus 9 times x plus 9, 9 times 9 is 81. And 9x plus 9x is 18x. Yes? Do you have to do it that way? Because that's just confusing me. You don't have to do it that way. But there's something you should know because it's going to make your um, test taking a lot easier to be able to start looking for those little tricks. Why can't you just take 15 from 81? You can. And then, but then you're going to have to use probably the quadratic formula to solve it because I don't know what this answer is. So you can't do that now? No. No, I try to do that. Yeah, if you do the, if you subtract 15 and then try and do the diamond method. 66 in the bottom, right, so then you're going to have to use a quadratic formula, which is fine, but I'm telling you, here's a shortcut. So when doing factoring, it's all about looking out for shortcuts. Because yes, the quadratic formula is always going to work, but you always want to look for shortcuts. You don't want to do the quadratic formula when if I gave you 10, if I give you 10 factoring problems, you don't want to do the quadratic formula for 10 of them. There's going to be shortcuts in there. So therefore, now I have x plus 9 squared equals 15. <coughs> and yes, this is definitely going to uh, not be an easy factoring problem because now to get rid of the square, so to undo squaring, I take the square root. <coughs> now those cancel out, so I have x plus 9 equals square root of 15. I subtract 9 to get my x by itself. Therefore, I have x equals a negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 15. So therefore, I'm going to have two answers. I'm going to have negative 9 plus square root of 15 and negative 9 minus 15. All right? I do not want you to approximate what the square root of 15 is. I want you to leave that at, under the radical. Yes? Why 9? Because 9 goes into 18 Yes, exactly. Because like 9 times 9 is 81, and 9 plus 9 is 18. Oh, shit. I might give you one of these, too. <laughs> what is that one? <coughs> Well, you just gotta look for them. X plus ten squared. X plus ten squared. So just look out for them. They're not gonna happen all the time, but they're a good shortcut. All right. So that is how you find the the root solution zeros x-intercepts of a quadratic function.